Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So last week I did a video where I debunked the top 10 vegan studies and I went through it line by line and I showed you how all 10 studies are debunked. And so now we're going to talk about LDL cholesterol or total cholesterol causing heart disease. I'm going to debunk this. So let's get started. Hey, it's Mike here, and today, high cholesterol and heart disease. It appears that most people today now believe that high cholesterol does not play a role in heart disease, that that's just old thinking. That's the old way. It is the old way. We'll get into it. And it makes sense because a quick Google search will yield a ton of results reinforcing that belief. You have low-carb doctors like Dr. Hyman telling you that the real concern isn't the amount of cholesterol. It's not the real concern. What it is is the amount of sugar that you consume. All you have and low carb Chris Kresser telling you that check mark diets high in saturated fat and cholesterol don't that's a true statement right there too they do not cause heart disease cause heart disease let's go to Burger King no Burger King has sugar they have white bread they have french fries the burgers are fine this just the meat patty themselves but not the high carbs or you can stay and watch while we look at the science, look into our arteries at how heart disease starts and progresses. Then we will see if basing your dietary choices off the idea that high cholesterol just doesn't matter is a good idea or not. Low carb educators present themselves as sort of renegades going against the authorities on the grounds that the authorities are wrong. With an authority like the National Institute of Health, Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute who- This is appeal to authority. It's a philosophical fallacy. So it's like saying, here's a committee, and they say this, therefore you must believe them because they are the committee. Or this is the association. Or this person has a degree, and therefore they're right because it's an association, or because they have a degree. That is appeal to authority, and it is not a val valid argument. So let's just skip this idea that the National Institutes of Health, Heart, Lungs, whatever, mean anything at all. They're just another group of people and they have their opinions and they can misread research just like anybody else. Outright just says that high cholesterol causes heart disease by building up on the artery walls. So is the NIH and a variety of other health authorities with the same view around the world just out of touch? Yes. We will see. Now at this point, I could pin population studies observing that higher cholesterol is associated with higher heart disease against dairy industry and egg industry funded other observational studies. So this is a good point. So you, if you've seen me talk before, observational studies are not worth you looking at unless you're a researcher and you're coming up with a hypothesis that you're going to actually do a trial on or to do an experiment on. So you can find an observational study saying one thing, another observational study saying another. But what he, what he just said is that the only people that contradict the observational studies are the egg funded or dairy funded or maybe cattlemen's association and those studies will contradict everybody else that's not a true statement there's other observational studies not funded by industry that um also contradict saying the opposite but people would probably just say correlation is in causation correlation is not causation what is he doing right here i don't know sounds like he's drowning in the truth that correlation does not cause, that is not causation. And then just outright deny everything I say. So yeah. instead I wanna look directly at the well-documented mechanisms in which high cholesterol causes and furthers the development of heart disease. All right, we're gonna talk about mechanisms. I, this is my favorite subject. I put mechanisms on my wall, check that out. So when you look at the hierarchy of studies and the value of evidence, Mechanistic studies are sort of in the middle. If you were to have a pyramid at the very top are randomized control trials or reviews of many randomized control trials. At the very bottom you have opinion um, and you have case reports down in the bottom. And you have the observational studies up next and then mechanistic studies and then cohort studies, which is another form of an observational study. But at the very top you got clinical trials and randomized control trials. So the mechanistic studies, they're in the middle because there's, they can be so confusing and so misleading and they can take us down a path that's completely incorrect. And there's so many vari variables inside the body. You take in some nutrients and a million things happen. And we think, we think we know it all, but we don't. But let's talk about the best of what we know about the mechanisms that occur inside the body. This is very interesting. Jeez. We're going inside the artery. Ms. Frizzle, get your school bus. 
To start, let's familiarize ourselves with what cholesterol actually is. Cholesterol is essentially little packages of fat in protein, lipo or fat proteins, lipoproteins. These are waxy, gooey, sticky. So cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like substance. Is it really sticky? Well, you know, if you put your finger inside a bowl of, of olive oil, it's, slime, it's uh, slippery. If you put your finger inside a bowl of sugar and your fingers are wet, it's sticky. So inside your blood, you have blood serum. That's water. So you add sugar to your blood, and that becomes very sticky. So you can have various different densities of fat, such as bacon grease, even at room temperature. It's not nearly as sticky as sugar. It's still, you know, greasy. It's slippery. Particles, just using some logic, the more waxy, sticky, gooiness you have, the harder it is for things to move. We know this from life. This is especially a problem in pipes like our arteries. Fats clog them. Looking at a more human scale example of this, all of the fat that we flush down the drain and poop out clogs our plumbing system. So wait a minute. That plumbing system is not your body. And outside your house, in the sewers, that is not your body. What's the big difference? Really, it's the temperature. That might be 50 degrees where that pipe is, Inside your body, it's 98.6 degrees. So the fat actually is in a liquid form when the temperature is high like that. So you can't just say that eating butter or bacon grease or lard clogs your arteries inside your body because it's a, it's a liquid form. It's not a solid form. So this is a bad analogy. It does not turn out to be true in real life. Our actual sewers from the San Francisco Chronicle quote, just as cholesterol can slowly catastrophic forward. or at least disgusting consequences. These buildups are called fat bergs. This woman has a hoodie on. It must be a little bit cold in that sewer. Maybe it's 40 degrees or 45 degrees. That baby fat berg grew because it's so cold in there. It is not 98.6 degrees. She is not sweating. Which are essentially the plaques of our sewer system's arteries. All right, back to the body. Let's look step by step at how heart disease and artery disease in a general progresses, starting with step number one, an injury. All right, an injury. So one of my first videos I ever put up on YouTube, I think it was 2013, was how to reverse cholesterol plaque arteries. And I said the same thing. Step number one is an injury. It's inside your artery, what caused the injury? There's multiple things, but primarily it's sugar. And the sugar is uh, very inflammatory. And then you get a whole process that occurs after the cut opens. And then your body tries to fix it. But you need to facilitate the healing of that injury. Number one, stop eating sugar. That's the first step. Number two, add in vitamin C. So you can get vitamin C from two sources. One is plants. In the 1940s, they knew that the best plant was actually buckwheat, seed, and leaf. And then the other food is meat. Raw meat has vitamin C in it. Raw meat has anti-scorbutic effects. What does that mean? A cut in the arteries is scurvy. Look, here's the Wikipedia page. It is scurvy. And I highlighted this one statement. This is from the 19th century. The surgeon-in-chief of Napoleon's army in 1801 wrote in his memoirs that the consumption of horse meat help the French to curb an epidemic of scurvy. So meat has been known for a long, long time to be a cure for scurvy, which is the break in your artery, the injury in your artery. So let's get back to this. It has to start with some damage to the lining of our arteries, and many things can cause this Sugar. injury, just like how many things can injure your skin. A major one is reactive oxidative species from sugar. free radicals, sugar. particles that are unstable. They need another electron, and they might just pull that electron. For so long in the mainstream, medicine, uh, mainstream media, they said inflammation is the cause of disease. The, and it was, of course, in PubMed. People were using this term inflammation so much it became overused. But the question is, what caused the inflammation? It's always sugar. It's grains. It's carbs. It's the refined carbohydrates. And then food preservatives, the chemicals that they put in the food, and then toxins outside, uh, environmental pollutants, air pollution, etc., etc. Out of the lining of your artery and cause some damage. Oxidized LDL or bad cholesterol. So oxidized LDL is LDL cholesterol that's been oxidized by something, sugar. 
So this is bad LDL. Cholesterol particles are one of these reactive particles that is well established as a cause from this horrible study that killed rabbits. Quote, cholesterol oxidation products have been reported to cause acute vascular injury. So don't eat sugar, then you won't oxidize your LDL. Sugar is the problem, it always was a problem, not fat. In vivo or live subjects. The higher your LDL, the more likely it is to oxidize and do damage. Why is this? That's a really good statement. So let me give you an analogy. Imagine you have this huge piece of land and you have many, many acres and you put two people in every acre and then you drop a bomb right in the middle of it. How many people will die? Let's say half the people die in this experiment. Now take the same piece of land, the same number of acres, and you, instead of putting two people in each acre, just put one. Drop the same bomb, now you have half the deaths. So the people are the LDL, and so the less LDL you have, the less damage you have inside your body. But he's not talking about the bomb. What is the bomb that's being dropped in this analogy? That's sugar. So he always keeps coming back to sugar. And other causes of artery... Here's the other causes, bacteria, virus, oxidative stress um, through various things such as hypoxia that's lactic acidosis that is the mechanism of chronic disease that i talk about all the time uh, turbulent blood flow and sheer stress that's a physical thing there's the environmental irritants such as tobac Neural tobacco include bacterial or viral environmental irritants next up we have step two a response to that injury we have a buildup of white blood cells which traps passing by cholesterol so here's the deal if you're at this stage you've gone way too far with your sugar consumption you should not be having white blood cells going to the area and they're going to try to repair the damage because you've already repaired it by stopping the sugar and then eating meat good quality meat and the more you cook meat the less vitamin c it has in it so the more meat um and then and then the plants the healthy you know vitamin c plants and you can repair the artery just like when you cut your hand you take care of it and then the scar forms and then it falls off that's the scar right there and if you're constantly cutting your hand you're going to have a buildup of more and more scars on your skin and essentially forms a zit in particular we get white blood cells known as macrophages which are designed to engulf the threat and neutralize it but instead they indiscriminately also engulf the cholesterol and create what is called a foam cell from this study when these macrophages eat that cholesterol quote there is little negative feedback of uptake and thus these cells become grossly engorged with lipids they just don't know when to stop eating no matter what here, having lower levels of cholesterol makes the situation better and higher levels make it worse. That's because we're so far into this disease process. The body's trying to repair, but you continue to eat bread and sugar. So like I said, just stop that. We're kind of beyond. Um, the rest of this video is, has already been debunked because of what I already said. But there's a couple more points I want to go over. With less, as liquid cholesterol becomes solid inside your artery. So how can liquid cholesterol become solid inside your body when your body temperature is 98.6 degrees? These cholesterol plaques are only 4% cholesterol. The other things that are in there do include white blood cells and they include fibrous tissue. Most of it is scar tissue. So cholesterol plaques should actually be renamed to something else. It should be called scar tissue. Wall, it can form cholesterol crystals from this study quote the crystals appeared as needles and from the journal nature quote minimally modified ldl can lead to cholesterol crystallization so what is minimally modified ldl what is that well i looked it up and here's what it is i found this definition minimally modified ldl is an oxidized ldl meaning it's been damaged by sugar enriched with oxidized phosphatidylcholines so they added something to it that's been damaged by sugar. So we have sugar causing these sort of crystals that are so nasty and sure. cause harm. In this study, listen to this, quote, crystalline cholesterol is found as a hallmark of advanced atherosclerotic plaques. Look at these guys, they're brutal, you do. They are brutal, that looks like sugar. Hey, do you wanna see what sugar looks like? That's what sugar looks like, it's pointy. There's points, there's that's not oil. That's not a lipoprotein. Oil is circular. It's membranous. 
do not want these in your arteries. So I just debunked the premise of the beginning of this video and the rest of the video is more of the same. And if you have the foundation that's uh, not truthful, then the rest of the information is also not truthful. So I'm gonna put the link below of the original video. You can watch the whole thing if you want. Right now it's been seen by 65,000 people and there's only 183 thumbs down. So let me give it a thumbs down. So he's missing the whole premise and he needs to catch up with uh, what we know about cholesterol with the uh, research that goes beyond uh, observational studies but gets into the correct physiology. And we need to get beyond what Ansel Key said and what the people said in the 70s and 80s about the mechanism of how cholesterol plaquing occurs.